start in just a minute. Hi everyone, we're gonna start in just a minute. Go ahead and say hello if you're here. Hopefully you're ready for a fun video because that's what I have on the schedule. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Time is of the essence today. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome, welcome. I'm Heather Powers from Humble Beads and I'm a jewelry maker, bead designer, um, author, illustrator, and your all around creative muse. And it's my job every week to get the beads off your table and into some jewelry. And uh, last week we had to reschedule our um, September Create Along, which is this beautiful bracelet we'll be making today. And so um, thank you guys for being uh, um, thoughtful and patient with me as we get this um, ready to go today. So some of you have the kits for this and you can follow along and make it with us. I don't have any more kits because I just do um, one kit for, for each month and when we sell out we're sold out. But we do have the, um, the items on the website that you can purchase and of course the focal bead i have lots of those in stock yeah so sandy um i just answered your question for you so thank you for asking that yes definitely um once the kits are sold out they're gone so we do have the pieces though and you can find most of them on their website and if not um i will have a what is it a worksheet download <laughs> with the instructions um, this weekend I just haven't had ch time to work on that so this weekend I will um, have that download for you and it will have the resources for everything on the list too yeah so the kits are always available at the beginning of the month and so like right now we're selling October's kit and I'll talk about that at the end of the video first I want to say hi to everybody so we have Cindy and Sandy and Candy and Sheila and my buddy Lynn hi Lynn in June and Laura and Janet. Hi guys, thank you for joining us. Hi Diana. I'm so glad you guys uh, are able to join. Hi Brenda, nice to have you here. So it's like perfectly autumn out today. Leaves are changing, pumpkins are on porches. And I just run around with like the goofiest smile on my face all the time during autumn because everything around here just makes me happy. <laughs> So, uh, today's bracelet is aptly named Autumn Bliss, which I kind of do feel in this state of bliss through the season of autumn. So, that's that. Hi, Nancy and Julie and Pam and Kathy and Elise. Welcome, welcome. Okay, guys, so today's project is easy. It's a beginner wire working type project. Anyone can make this, and I'm going to walk you guys through step by step how to get this started. So um, these are the two ones that I had. And as you can see, <clears throat> if you have any, <clears throat> sorry, combination of leaves, you can use that. I did like a really random pattern on here, but I'll share my little tricks for the randomness <laughs> when we put this together. And it's just basic wire wrapping and some jump rings. And this will whip together really quickly, you guys. Hi, Marilyn. Nice to have you here. Yay. Yeah, it's really fun. It's a, it's a, it's a really nice one to wear too. So this is just on my wrist. I'm too close up, but yeah, it's really cute. You guys, you're going to love it. All right. So our goodies, we're going to start with uh, our focal bead. For some reason, when I design jewelry, I kind of always start in the middle and work my way out. And I will be using... 20 gauge para wire in the art metal color so it's uh, dark gray and it's called art metal this is from vintage <laughs> Lynn I have fallen for autumn it's so true <laughs> hi Gabriella thank you and Susan and Rosalinda Rosalinda nice to have you guys here okay I'm going to do um, Oh, about five inches of wire, and I should just pull out my ruler and make sure I am 
<clears throat> what do you know? I was spot on, you guys. I'm going to do two five-inch pieces. I might not even need this much. And I did give you guys a little extra wire in your kits just to be on the safe side. Okay, so I have my five-inch piece of wire and my um, uh, focal bead. Okay, I have to answer a question before we go any further because I will forget. Um, Vicki asks, your moon dish, where do you get it? So this is from um, Sullivan, Sullivan Clay Works is her website. And these are actually paint palettes for like watercolor or acrylic paints. And I just use it as a bead dish. It was a little pricey, but sometimes she has um, seconds sales and so I got a good deal on it on one of her second sales and so um Sullivan Clayworks is the artist who who does these and um she makes really gorgeous color I mean paint palettes which is how I first discovered her but it's just the perfect bead dish isn't it <laughs> okay I am going to put about one and a half inches no through the back I'm going to push this up and I'm going to pull the back one over for the front to the front and then I'm going to take the back one here and make a loop dun, dun, dun. and I'm just gonna wrap around two or three times. See, I did waste a lot of wire. You could have totally gotten away with four inches without any problem at all. I'm going to cut this a little shorter because I want that end to go in the back, not towards the front. And I'm going to take this little piece here in the front and wrap it around two or three times. Kind of got a funky wrap going there. There we go. And I'm working um, down closer to the bottom of the focal bead as I wrap. So it goes from the top to the bottom. And I ended up ending it in the front again. We're just going to pretend those are ending in the back and let me try that again on the other side. Okay. Let's pull it up and over. Let's do this. This will be a little easier. All right, guys. So I've pulled it up and over. I have my two inches of uh, one and a half inches of wire. And I'm going to wrap that first around two times tightly. And now I'm going to do the loop on the top here. I don't know what I was thinking on the other side. <laughs> All right. I'm going to grab onto this. And I'm going to wrap it around two times tightly going down and then I'm going to oh, actually let's do three times and I'm going to wrap up back towards the loop to get a few extra wraps going I'll probably redo the other side um, after the video was I off the screen the whole time I'll just redo the other side make sure I'm on the video Let me cut this off and start again. Okay, so I don't need, I'm just going to do four inches. I don't really need more than four inches. Have that about an inch and a half behind. And I'm going to pull that over and wrap it around two times, nice and tight. Now 
I'm going to um, bend the wire forward, grab it and wrap it around my pliers, lift it over the focal bead, and that will give me the loop that we need. And I'll grab my loop and I'm going to wrap around two times going down towards the focal bead and then I'm going to wrap two or three more times on top of the first wraps going towards the loop. So first I go towards the focal and then I go towards the loop. I'm going to end this, make sure it's in the back because that's been my struggle lately. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so there we have the two wraps on the focal bead, and then we're going to set that aside for a moment. And now I'm going to grab my little bowl of uh, jump rings and seed beads here, and I'm going to be using an eight millimeter plain jump ring, a brass one, and then size eight seed beads. So these are a little bit bigger seed beads. And you're going to grab your jump ring. Oh, yeah. I'm going to open it up. Throw all these back on here. Keeping it real, you guys. Keeping it real. Well, at least they didn't fall on the floor because I don't know about you but my bead room floor is the Bermuda Triangle if something falls on there I seem to never find it again okay now I'm going to grab a seed bead and slip it on and there's just no fa fast way to do this so just gotta do it by hand um, I gave you guys quite a few extra beads in your kit for the seed beads in case one goes flying or if a hole's a little too small you can just put it aside and go on to the next one. Okay now we're going to close this jump ring up and dun 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 like one of those fancy TikTok uh <laughs> videos. You're going to do nine of these. See, so there's going to be clusters of three on the jump ring. So I have nine of those done. Hi, Susan. Nice to have you here. All right. Now I'm going to be wire wrapping. four leaves on one side and three leaves on the other. Let me grab a different leaf I grabbed. So this random pattern <laughs> that I've done, I have um, orange cream, then the one teal with gold, and then the metallic. And then over here I have the metallic, the gold, um, teal, and then the orange again. So you could really do this in any pattern. I just wanted to make sure there was a good mix between the beads. We have. Um, two of each color except for the cream we have one and then if you have the other kit I'll just put this on here and we'll go over the pattern real quick with this one if you have the blue gray kit it goes green copper two of the teal with the gold and then copper teal with the gold and green so if you want to take a screenshot real quick of that, if you, if this is your kit, that would be good. <laughs> oh, I actually do have these pictures too. I'll post those on Facebook. Duh. Sorry. 
All right, now let's get back to wire wrapping these guys. So we have three, three, and then one. And I'm gonna take about five inches of wire. And I'm gonna do a wrapped loop on one end. that around my pliers and I'm going to grab the back of it and pull it so that the loop is straight above my long wire here. Okay, now I'm going to grab onto this and I'm going to wrap around two times. Tightly. And I can probably only wrap around one side. I should have given myself a little extra. But that's okay. I'll do it the right way on the other side. And only you and I know it's not the right way. Everyone else won't even notice. <laughs> Just trying to get that squeezed in there a little bit tighter. Start with the orange. And you want to make sure your wire is pretty straight. Um, just straighten this out a little. If you have a wire straightener, you can use that too. Okay, so then we have this guy going down, and you want to put your other leaf going up. And then we're going to have the next one down and when we wrap these we're going to wrap them really tight so that the leaves will stay in the direction that we put them in. Okay now I'm going to do the loop on the other side. So I'm going to bend that over and wrap it around my pliers to make that loop. And then I'm going to grab onto my loop and I'm going to wrap around two times tightly as close to the beads as I can. And so now those aren't going to move around more than just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to wrap two to three times over the rest of that wire. Now I want both of these um, ends need to be going front to back so that they end in the right direction. Okay, I'm going to trim this off. But now that I've walked you through it, I'm going to do it a little bit quicker for the other two. The next one, I'm only going to grab three inches of wire should be enough for this other little guy. Oh no. Guys, I'm so sorry. My microphone came unplugged. Ah. Now you can hear me. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Let me try this again on this other little bead here. Sorry. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, I just... um pulled the microphone cord with my elbow and it unplugged. <laughs> okay, now you guys can hear me. All right, we got the focus. We got the sound. We are ready to rock. <laughs> I'm going to set this in the center of my wire. And I'm going to wrangle this loop. Oh my 
I guess. Okay. Wrap around two times tightly. Then going back the loop over the um, the wire towards the loop. I'm going to wrap around two to three more times. Ending in the back here. And pinching this close nice and tightly. I also like to push this up so that all the little wires condense together. Okay, now I'm going to do this on the other side. And I want to make sure that the wire is going um, front to back and that the little end of the wire is in the back. So I'm going to wrap this around my pliers again to make my loop. Okay. <laughs> you guys, now, now we've gotten it. You can hear Jesse wrapping your packages in the background and hear me um, actually talking to you instead of whispering from far away inside a tin can. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good sound. Oh, okay. Eh, not my best wraps, but what can you do? Okay, so I'm going to do five inches of wire for the trio of leaves. And I'm actually going to do this without the leaf on because that'll be much easier. Okay, so I've wrapped it around. I'm going to bend this so that it's straight above my wire. I'm going to grab onto it, to the loop, wrap around two times tightly, and then two times a little bit looser on the top, making sure I end in the back. And pinching that little tail in. And also remember, um, a few videos ago, you can take a Sharpie marker and color in this little See that little coppery spot there? It helps if I turn it the right way. <laughs> okay, see that little coppery spot just is poking out? So you can do a little, um, a little bit of black marker on there. Okay, so I'm going to straighten this out. and string on my beads. I'm going to start with the teal color and I'm alternating the directions these are going. And so the leaves, they have um, a slight curve to them and so that's how I know that what's the front and the back. I want the curve to be um, on the front so that they curve upward. In case you're wondering how I know it's front and back. Okay, now we're going to bend that down. Pull it around. And then I'm going to grab onto it and wrap around two times tightly. And this is where I want to make sure I don't have any, um, that my beads are nice and tight there and not swishing around too much. I need to remember to look up at the camera and see what you guys are seeing. <laughs> 
Okay. There we go. Okay, now if these little guys are twisted the wrong way or not quite lining up, you can just take your two pairs of pliers and turn them so that the loops are both going in the same direction. So, easy way to fix that. All right, now I'm going to grab my larger jump rings, and these are 9.2, 9.25 millimeter are these little guys, and so I'm going to pull those out. And we're going to start constructing the bracelet. I'm going to grab my focal. And I'm going to be attaching the leaves to the focal bead with the uh, larger jump rings. And these are heavy duty jump rings. Okay, I'm going to slide this on. And now I'm going to take three of my little beaded jump rings here and slip those on. And then the other, uh, I mean the beaded leaf link. And I'm going to close these up. Make sure I close that jump ring really tight. Okay, and I'm going to repeat on the other end of the leaf with my tiny little leaf here. So I'm going to slip this on and then throw on three of those jump rings. And then my little guy here. Okay, I'm going to go into this side and attach These two together. Oh, look at that. Okay. So I'm going to grab the three jump rings, throw those on. Yeah, I'm just going to throw that on, make sure I have it turned the right way. fight with your jump rings for a minute. <laughs> Get those nice and closed up. Oh yeah, you don't want to go too tight that you crack the bead. That's for sure, um, Susie. Great point. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do a little tiny pumpkin. I mean, not pumpkin, acorn. I got pumpkins on the brain. So you're going to take your head pin. This is a 12 millimeter melon bead. And then the brass acorn bead cap. And you're going to do um, a wrapped loop on the top here. I love these little acorns. So cute. So once you make your loop, you're going to wrap around two times tightly and then several times, probably going to go all the way to almost the end of the wire here. And that looks good. I'm going to trim off this little end. There's my acorn 
adorable. These also make really cute little earrings, you guys. But we're going to um, actually use them on the bracelet. And the reason I put them on the end of the bracelet is he's the counterweight. So when you make a bracelet, if you don't have a counterweight or something heavy on the back, your bracelet's just going to kind of um, roll around on your wrist. So this, this adds a little bit of weight to the back of the bracelet. And now for the ends, I'm going to do um, two of the small jump rings with the branch here. This is the branch toggle and then a hammered ring is the other side and that's going to be the loop part of my toggle. And so I'm going to use one of the big jump rings here. Just open this up, slip on your beads, your acorn, Ooh, and then I almost forgot, you need to grab the little um, five millimeter jump ring and attach this little five millimeter jump ring to your hammered loop, I mean your hammered, yeah, loop. hammered circle. Maybe that's what it's called. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to attach this to the end of the bracelet here. And close it up. Now for the other side, I'm going to take my little bar and I have two jump rings here and they've kind of already nestled together. So I'm just going to make sure well, I don't have to do anything. I need to open them. Oh yeah, one of them I need to close tightly. And that's going to be the one that attaches to the large jump ring. And the smaller one, I'm going to open that up and attach it to my bar. Yeah, the acorns are adorable. You could have acorns on everything. Put an acorn on the bottom of a pendant, on your bracelet, for your earrings. And the reason I do two little jump rings on here is just so that it lays a little nicer underneath the, uh, the hammered ring. Okay, now I'm going to grab my large jump ring and I'm going to attach the toggle bar to my bracelet and then this completes our project, you guys. So fast, easy, simple, even with my little hiccups. <laughs> which I seem incapable of not doing. Okay, so here's our bracelet. Super cute, super fun, easy to make. Ooh. Did I put this guy on the wrong side? No, he's on the right side. Okay. Maybe. trying to figure out why this isn't um yeah I put my little acorn on the wrong side so I'll open that up and put them on the other side and just in case you guys are wondering why I did the bracelet design with the extra little leaf here it's because when um when it's laying on the wrist this kind of takes up the space of the big toggle. So evens it out a little, helps it fit a little nicer on the wrist. And so that is my guy. That's my finished project, guys. Super easy, super fun. Yes, now we need to make matching acorn earrings to go with it, right? <laughs> that would be ideal. And again, I will put these on the Facebook group 
I mean, Facebook page just one last time so that you guys can find them easily um, with the supply list. I can put the supply list up today. And so we'll have the supply list with the two finished ones so that you know how to um, arrange it. Yes, you do have, this is uh, definitely um, fits eight and a half inches, you guys. So if you want, you could remove, you could remove this bead and, um, you know, have it a little bit shorter. So that's that, you guys. Yay, we did it. All right, real quick before you go, I have a few little things to share with you guys. All right, my kit for October is in conjunction with the Great Bead Extravaganza, which is going to be October 23rd, a Sunday at 2 p.m. I will be doing my presentation with this, um, with this bird necklace, and I have it in the yellow, a cream, and a berry purple, really pretty. And so I have those on the website, they're still available. We're making 90 kits, and once they're sold out, they're sold out. We're not going to be making any more. So if you want to join us on the 23rd for the Great Beat Extravaganza and this project, you can find those on the website. And then I added some new birds today. So if you guys are looking for birds, I made a bunch of these, and they're in stock and ready to go. And so I'm not doing made-to-orders anymore, so we... I've been making larger batches of beads. And then finally, I have the October Color Challenge. And the October Color Challenge is, of course, inspired by the changing leaves of the season and a little bit of my um, photo filtering skills to get that purple color. <laughs> but great colors for autumn. And that you guys are going to find in the Humble Beads VIP party group. All you have to do is make a piece of jewelry inspired by this color palette using some items that you've gotten from Humble Beads and then put it on the album in the group and share it with us. And then I pick uh, a reader, a, a reader, a winner at the end of the month for a $50 gift certificate. And you can find all of that at humblebeads.com for the kits and the bracelets. All right, I have a few questions that I will go back and answer. Um, John Ellen asks, any update on the Monet class? Not yet. Um, hopefully I'll have the details ready for you guys by the weekend and registration will be early next week. And so that is going to be my next online class for you guys. It's going to be a retreat. Three days of creating jewelry and beads inspired by Monet's garden. I am super excited about this, you guys. That'll be so much fun. Um, oh, and tomorrow in the Great Bead Extravaganza group, all day long, I'm going to be doing a takeover for the group. And so I'll be featuring some... Um, some of my favorite projects, some tips, some color inspiration, and I'll be doing several giveaways tomorrow for the um, Great Beat Extravaganza. And I will be doing um, free, wa free, free wobbles with orders. <laughs> if you guys don't know what a wobble is, these are wobbles. And I have um, new batches of different colors. I just have greens and blues on my desk right now but we've done them in all sorts of autumn colors to purples and oranges and yellows and golds and so um the deal is when I do these specials it's going to be one set of free wobbles with every $50 purchase no limit so for every $50 you spend you'll get a little set of wobbles and so that's hard to say that'll be through um today and tomorrow. So if you placed an order um, yesterday, today, or tomorrow, I will put the wobbles in your order for you too. And if you could do me a favor when you check out, just put wobbles on the note in your order so that we know to throw some wobbles in there. We usually remember, but just in case. <laughs> 
I, I like weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. That's only if you're a 70s child do you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. That's all my stuff for tomorrow. So join me in the Great Beat Extravaganza group tomorrow. You can just, if you're not a member of that group, just look up Great Beat Extravaganza group and that will be ready for you. I mean, you can join and the takeover will be tomorrow and I will be doing several giveaways. Um, you won't need to do anything other than comment to enter the giveaways. And so free humble beads. Yay! Carmen asks, when will I do the Vintage Box subscription? And that'll be next week, Carmen, on Wednesday. So next Wednesday, um, we will be doing that. Sylvia, I have some of Wobbles for sale right now on the website. You just go in there and look under Discs and Spacers, and that's where they'll be on the website. Don't forget, you guys, we have the coffee break on Friday, too, so you get three full days of me. Actually, I won't be doing videos tomorrow. I'll just be doing the giveaways and sharing things on the website. I might do, um, no, I'm not going to do any videos. I don't have time. I got to get orders up tomorrow. <laughs> but for the takeout, uh, takeover tomorrow and the Great Beat Extravaganza, I will be doing um, giveaways, giving uh, gift certificates throughout the day. So definitely join us for that. And then on Friday, for the Humble Beads coffee break. I thought Jesse would have some faux tin things done, but we've been running him around on a million doctor's appointments this week for some reason between all of us in the house and Oliver, <laughs> my cat. We've just been, uh, he's been on the road a lot this week. So we're going to do faux tin um, next, next Friday. And this Friday I have disc beads, guys. I've been making lots of disc beads. I have Halloween disc beads. They're so cute. Um, just like perfectly Halloween stripes and all sorts of funky fun patterns. And then I have uh, just some autumn colors too. Not necessarily Halloween, but lots of autumn beads. So those will be on the website tomorrow and you can join me at 3 p.m. for the coffee break and I will be sharing all of the new stuff with you. All right, guys. So tomorrow, throughout the day, Great Beat Extravaganza. Make sure you're signed up for the group. Um, well, not all day. It'll be from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. I'll be doing the giveaway, Eastern Standard Time. Cindy, if you want to pop into the group. If you're um, a member of the Great Beat Extravaganza group, just make sure your notifications are on for the day and you will get all the updates. All right, guys, that's it. So see you tomorrow in the takeover there's um i'll just be sharing things throughout the day there's not a video for that and then friday at um 3 p.m sorry <laughs> friday at 3 p.m we'll be doing our coffee break okay it's a lot of stuff i'll post about it, the whole schedule um on my humble beads page too for you guys so you don't have to take notes <laughs> You guys, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. I hope you found today inspiring. And we do have lots of the cuff beads, the leaf ones, on the website. And I know you guys can make some really great things with it. All right. Thank you, guys. I will talk to you later. Yeah, you can watch the replay, Sylvia, here on Facebook or on YouTube.